So today I'm going to be giving you very valuable information that is going to keep you from damaging a piece of gear that you also cherish and love and you paid for it dearly. Now the industry is pouring out products and we usually get to these products over YouTube and we watch YouTube videos and we think that we understand how we are supposed to use these products where even the people on YouTube don't know how to use the products properly and nobody reads the fucking manual. Read the manual. So in this video, we're going to be going very deep into the problem of load boxes. But before we begin, I need to introduce you to the very cool sponsors of this video. And it is the Tool fans. So in the presence of people who are fans of Tool, which are very cool, I need to tell you about the Slightly Technical Academy, which you can find on slightlytechnicalacademy.com. And there you can actually learn about the, these exact things that we are talking in this video in detail. And registration is for free. And there are some free Tonex packs. So let's get on with the video. Load boxes. Why do we need them? Well, a lot of us know that tube amplifiers don't work without a speaker properly, so whatever our amplifier would be outputting to the speaker so to make the speaker physically move, now we would connect it to a load box so the load box can soak up all the power. So what does soaking up the power mean? Basically means it's gonna turn the power into heat. Now why is that important? Well, different load boxes can handle different amounts of power. There are some that can handle 100 watts, some can handle a little bit more, and it is written in the manual. Let's check that out. So this is a manual for the Fryat power station, and it says 200 watts at 2, 4, or 16 ohms, and 150 watts at 8 ohms. Now, why is there a difference in this? Well, it's just because they use some components that they would put series in parallel, so it's sort of normal from a designer's standpoint, but that's not really important for this video. These companies need to be in compliance with certain standards if they're a normal company, so when they say that this load box will handle a certain amount of power, it will probably be able to handle a little bit more. Now we need to understand is how much power do our amplifiers actually generate and it's the exact thing that people usually get wrong. So if we have an amplifier that's rated at 100 watts, that only means that the amplifier will be able to play a sine wave at 100 watts with very, very low distortion. And it's a sine wave at one kilohertz. So we don't know nothing about the low frequencies or the high frequencies. It basically tells us it's like 100 watts of clean. Now I love the example of the Marshall Plexi because it doesn't have a master volume and we always play it distorted. And that basically means that when you crank the Marshall Plexi, it immediately goes over 100 watts. And let me elaborate on that a little bit. So on the Slightly Technical Academy, I have a dedicated page for this. I wrote a paper on this whole thing. So what happens is when you crank a Marshall Plexi, what's happening is around, let's say nine o'clock on the gain control, you would have like a sine wave. It's a clean signal, a cleanish type of guitar signal. The more input you give, so higher pickups or you crank the gain a little bit more, the amplifier starts compressing, sagging the power supply a little bit and changing this sine wave. And then eventually, it's going to become very distorted. It's going to look something like this, which is very close to a perfect square wave. Now the calculation for power for a perfect square wave at a certain frequency is very different compared to a sine wave and the end result is more watts. So basically what we know now is that the amplifier that's rated at 100 watts, when it is distorted, it actually outputs more watts. And in the case of a Marshall Plexi, it can even go like 60, 70% up. Now, normally it really depends on the amplifier and how much the power supply will sag. But a lot of these oldies, they're actually powerhouses. The next thing that we need to understand is that these units are soaking power and getting hot. They're designed to get hot. If they're made right, they're properly heat synced and they would have some kind of a fan to create some air circulation because only with air circulation can these units reach the power rating that's written in the manual. So in practice, what do we do about it? Well, first thing, you never put it like this because heat goes up and the heat 
heat from the tubes is actually going up and heating up your power load. So keep it in a different place where it's a little bit cooler or at least it's not getting hot more than it should. Next thing to do is to always use this unit in a well ventilated area and just not in a room that's just too hot because it's going to lower the amount of power that this unit can sort of soak up and when everything gets hot it's sort of cumulative and the device will fail and it can damage your amplifier. But listen up, this video is not supposed to scare you in any way. These units are designed to do what they're designed to do and they do it well. Just use these few tips and you'll be well off. An important thing to understand about the power of the amplifiers and the power rating of these power soaks and power loads is that if you have a 100 watt load box, it will not be able to handle fully cranked amplifiers like these and Marshall Plexis and similar stuff. You will damage the load box and you can potentially damage your amplifier. So keep that in mind. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you found this video useful, please click on the like button down there and subscribe to the channel and go visit the Slightly Technical Academy because there is knowledge and it is free and knowledge is power. And I'll be seeing you in the next video very soon.